You might want to grab a snack or a drink for this one. It could be long. Hello, beautiful friends. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I have a large book unhaul for you. Now, full transparency, these are not books that I've only recently decided to unhaul. They've been accumulating for the past several months and I have already listed most of them on Pango. And going forward, as I do unhaul, I will be filming videos. So this is just a collective haul for the past several months, kind of as a catch up to show what I've been getting rid of recently. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. There are two primary reasons why I'm getting rid of these books. And so you're going to hear the same reasons over and over again. The first one is that I just no longer have interest in these books. A lot of them are YA and I'm just moving in a different direction from YA and so I really have no interest in reading these books any further or they're books that I've read and was just lukewarm about and no longer feel the need to keep them on my shelves. First I have Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetys. Ruta Sepetys is a young adult historical fiction author. She is very beloved here in the online bookish community. I did read this one and I remember enjoying it during my time of reading but I remember absolutely nothing about this book. I only remember that this follows a very little known shipwreck that happened during, I believe it was World War II. And that's really all that I remember of it. And it's not something that I ever plan to revisit. And because of that, I don't feel like it's being well served sitting on my shelves. I would much rather put this into the hands of somebody who would enjoy it. And so I'm going to go ahead and let it go. Next, I have Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake. This was a popular YA fantasy when it first released. I believe there's about five books in this series at this time. I know that this is also another well-loved series and it was one that I was interested in reading at a time, but no longer. I don't really want to start a series I don't know I'm going to be fully invested in. And a lot of the fantasy that I'm gravitating towards these days are like adult epic high fantasy. And I just don't think that this is going to satisfy what I'm looking for. Next, I have Starfish by Akimi Don Bowen. Now, I believe that this is a harder hitting YA contemporary. This is definitely something that I would probably normally look for in a YA contemporary if I was going to read that genre. However, one of the main reasons I'm getting rid of this is because there is no audiobook, or at least there was no audiobook at the last time I checked, which was a few weeks ago. As I very rarely sit down and read anything physically these days and if I do it is going to be one of those epic fantasies so that I can annotate it and mark it up and things of that nature. This is not really something I plan on ever just sitting down and reading. I don't have enough interest in this book to do that and so I'm going to go ahead and pass it along. If it ever comes out with an audiobook I may be willing to go ahead and pick that up in the future but for right now it doesn't need to be sitting on my shelves when somebody else could give it some love. This is Lost and Found by Katrina Leno. This pains me a little bit because Katrina Leno wrote one of my favorite YA magical realism stories of all time, The Summer of Salt. I absolutely adore that story with my whole heart and soul. It's beautiful. It's magical. It's got great atmosphere. It's lovely, lovely story. And it made me want to read everything that Katrina Leno has written. I did read everything all at once, which was okay. It wasn't mind blowing or anything, but I did enjoy that for the most part. Then I read You Must Not Miss and really, really did not like that story. But still, I had this on my shelves. And so because of that, I wanted to go ahead and read it. But I started reading this and just realized this wasn't what I was wanting. This wasn't what I was in the mood for. But I don't really feel like that's a Katrina Leno thing. I think that's a me thing. As I'm moving away from YA, I have a very little patience for what YA I do read. And this one was another one that didn't have an audiobook, if I remember correctly. I'm not entirely sure, but I just know that I got about 100 pages into it and didn't care, didn't want to continue. It wasn't holding my interest. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pass this along. I'm going to go ahead and keep Summer of Salt on my shelves and just really cherish that book for what it was, but probably not continue with Katrina Leno as an author. Next, I have Sea Fire by Natalie C. Parker. I don't know much about this book. This is a young adult. I believe it's like a pirate fantasy, and I really just don't have any interest in reading it. I haven't heard the best things about it, and so I'm just going to go ahead and pass this along. Next, I have Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott with Mickey Daughtry and Tobias Laconius. This cover is stunning. I absolutely love this cover so much. I was really interested in the story because I believe it follows chronically sick teenagers and a love story that happens between them. And I'm still really intrigued by that story. I am. I know that it was made into a movie, which I was interested in seeing as well. But this is, again, something that doesn't pull to me. It's not something that I'm in the mood to read. It's not something I think I'm going to get to anytime soon. And because of that, I want to go ahead and give it to somebody who might be willing to give it more love sooner than I am. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. Next, I have Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. So I actually read Fable by Adrian Young. I believe that's one of her newer YA fantasies. And I really enjoyed that and do plan on continuing. I believe it might be like a duology or there might be a companion novel to it, which I will be reading. And she recently released her first adult novel, which I'm absolutely excited to get to. But I don't really have any interest in her backlist, including this one. This one was really popular at the time it was released and it did pique my interest at the time, but it has just been sitting on my shelves and I have really not been pulled to go ahead and pick it up. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one go as well. Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson. I 
believe this is a young adult fantasy novel that is set during the time of the gold rush. This is another one that did pique my interest at some point but it's just been sitting on my shelves gathering dust and I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to somebody who could love it more than I do. Next I have My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows and I did read this one and I actually really had so much fun with it when I read it and this was historical fiction with a twist. So it is a reimagining of an historical event with magical twists thrown in and like I said it was a lot of fun. The humor in here is spot on. The audiobook was fantastic. I really did enjoy my reading experience with this. But this is a series that I don't plan on continuing in. I know that they had the Lady Janie series. Now they have like a Mary series going on. And like I said, these are so much fun and they're such a great reading experience, but I just don't really plan on continuing. And because of that, I don't feel the need to keep this on my shelves. I'm sure somebody else is going to have a lot of fun with this book. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and pass it along. Next, I have No Bad Deed by Heather Chavez. This was a suspense thriller that I literally remember nothing about. Unless I actually read this back cover, I don't remember anything about this book off the top of my head and because of that I don't want to keep it on my shelves. I don't like keeping things on my shelves where I can't look at it and at least remember the feelings it evoked in me and there was nothing with this. I pretty sure that this was like a standard three 3.5 star read. Meh, forgettable, and I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. Next I have a middle grade. This is the first book in the Wings of Fire series by Twee T. Sutherland. I actually read this because my husband's nephew, he is a big reader, and when we were over there last Christmas, he was showing me some of the books that he loves, and he is a huge, huge fan of this series. He's read several of the books. I don't know how many are in this series, but he's probably read the first 12, 13, 14. He has read a lot of them, and as he was just talking about them and being so passionate about them, they did look like a lot of fun, because they follow dragons, different types of dragons with different magic and skills. And like there's a conflict brewing and it just sounded like a lot of fun. And I made him a deal. I said, if you read Harry Potter, I will read this. And so I did. And I actually really liked this. This was a four star read. In theory, I'm not against continuing in this series. I just know that I'm not going to. Middle grade is not really my thing. I do have some middle grade that I've enjoyed and I do have some series that I've heard a lot of great things about that I do want to start that might be on the older end of middle grade. I just don't see myself continuing in this series. I don't see myself ever being in the mood to continue with the series. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass this along to possibly another young middle grade reader who would love to start the series. Next, I have The Giver by Lois Lowry. This, of course, is a classic. It's an award winner for a reason. If I remember correctly, this does have like dystopian elements to it or maybe utopian. I cannot honestly remember. That's one of the main reasons why I'm going to go ahead and pass this along because I know that when I read it many, many years ago, it's probably been 15, 20 years since I read the story. I know that I really enjoyed it at the time of reading it and I thought it was a really unique concept, especially because at the time that I read this, I never really read any other types of dystopian stories. So this was really unique to me at the time. But like I said, I don't remember absolutely anything about this and I know that it is part of a series that I will not be reading, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and just pass this along. Next, I have Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernard. Now, I purchased this because I had read A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard and really enjoyed it. That follows two teenagers. If I remember correctly, one of them is a selective mute and one of them is deaf. And it follows their struggles and then their relationship. And I really enjoyed that one overall. And I do still have that one on my shelves. But again, as I'm moving away from YA and YA Contemporary in particular, I just don't feel a pull to pick this one up. I'm sure that it does have some harder hitting elements. I believe this follows a main character whose best friend is having an affair with her teacher. So I believe it could have some of those harder hitting elements I'm typically looking for in YA contemporary, but it's just another one where I don't feel a pull to pick it up. I don't feel like I'm in the mood to pick it up. I feel like if it were something that were like put on a TBR for me, I wouldn't be interested in reading it. And because of that, I'm going to follow my instincts and I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. Fragments of the Lost by Megan Miranda. This is one of Megan Miranda's young adult suspense thrillers. I have a very love-hate relationship with Megan Miranda. I have read several of her adult thrillers as well, and they never blow me away but almost every single time when I'm reading them, I find them entertaining enough. And that's why I continue to read from her. Even though I always have issues with her books, there's something about the way that she writes and the plot lines that make me want to continue picking her up as an author. This one I believe was a three star read and it was just okay. This was the very first book I had ever read by Megan Miranda. I remember not being very surprised by the supposed twist that was in this story. It was pretty forgettable in my opinion and so I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. Next I have The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. I actually recently read this in October and I will try to remember to link my full wrap-up of this story up above in case you are interested. This is a historical fiction that follows two timelines. One is set in 1919 and one is set in I believe it's 1966 and I just found this overall very underwhelming. I wasn't particularly interested in or invested in either timeline. I didn't really feel like there was a whole lot going on to be honest. 
didn't really care about any of the characters. Didn't really hold my attention all that much and I've quite frankly forgotten a lot of the details already and so I'm gonna go ahead and pass this along. Summer Wives by Beatrice Williams. Beatrice Williams is another popular historical fiction author and I've heard a lot of great things about her so I wanted to go ahead and pick this up but this really doesn't seem like the kind of historical fiction that I like to read. I do really enjoy historical fiction but a lot of the historical fiction that I prefer to pick up is World War II centric although I have read and enjoyed other time periods of historical fiction but this really just doesn't seem like up my alley. I believe it follows like 1950s housewives or something. I don't even really know so I'm just gonna go ahead and again follow my instincts on this one and let it go. So these next two I have not yet listed on Pango and I'm still kind of wishy-washy over whether I really want to go ahead and get rid of them or not because I'm not entirely sure and they are special editions. So I have King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. It can you can see that it has like these beautiful gorgeous sprayed edges and then I also have Rule of Wolves which also has beautiful silver sprayed edges. Now these books are kind of a continuation of the Grisha verse that we've already been a part of. So you have the original Grisha trilogy and then you have the Six of Crows duology and I believe these follow characters from each set of stories. I don't really know what they're about. I don't really know the trajectory that they take. I have heard very mixed things about King of Scars and so I'm just not motivated to pick these ones up. Did I like the Grisha trilogy? Yes. Did I love the Six of Crows duology? Absolutely. I loved those characters. I just have overall very much enjoyed my time in this world and I even like the Netflix adaptation even though it's very very different but I don't feel the urge to continue. I don't really feel like I need to. I feel like how they ended is good enough for me and I don't necessarily feel like they needed anything more and so when I think about picking these up I just I just really don't want to. I don't have the urge to and so I'm definitely considering unhauling these but if you have read these books if you have loved them if you think I should go ahead and give them a try please let me know like I said I haven't listed them on Pango yet because I'm still kind of going back and forth on whether I actually want to unhaul them and I would love to hear your feedback. Next I have The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. This is actually a nonfiction, and the tagline says The Happiness Project or why I spent a year trying to sing in the morning, clean my closets, fight right, read Aristotle, and generally have more fun. I really enjoy Gretchen Rubin. I think she is highly intelligent, very articulate. I have listened to several episodes of the podcast that she hosts with her sister sometimes. I did used to like follow her newsletter in the past. I think she's just very much a self-aware inspiring human being and it really all started with her happiness project and I read this quite a while ago and do you think that you can get a lot out of it if you do read it or even if you just follow Gretchen Rubin in general because like I said she has a lot of great things to say and she even asks some great questions to help you learn more about yourself as a person but this is not really something I ever plan to revisit so I do want to pass this on to somebody who hasn't read it yet and who could possibly get a lot more out of it because like I said there's really nothing against this book that's not why I'm unhauling it I just don't plan to revisit it and it doesn't need to be sitting on my shelves. Next I have Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray and The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling. These are both Fairy Loot exclusive edition paperbacks. They were sent as bonus books in two of the Fairy Loot boxes that I received when I was still subscribed to that service. They were never really something I was interested in. Again, they were just bonus books and so I don't feel the need to hang on to them. So these are definitely already up on my Pango if you are interested. The Line Between by Tosca Lee. So I really enjoyed this when I read this. This actually follows our main character Winter who was basically thrown out of like this doomsday cultish scenario. And so this cult is really all that she has ever known and so she's thrown out into the real world she's really trying to adjust and then all of a sudden the world is hit with this terrifying pandemic that is causing people to have early onset dementia so you are following her in the present as she's struggling to adjust to her new life outside of the cult but also what is happening with this pandemic and you're also getting glimpses from inside the cult as well so again I actually really enjoyed my reading experience of this I just don't know if I'm going to continue in this series so I wanted to go ahead and pass it along but definitely worth the read next year in Havana by Chanel Clayton I know this is going to be an unpopular opinion but I did not love this story. I know that there are other companion books in this series and I don't plan on continuing with them. There were two perspectives. You're following the main character in the present as she's returning to Cuba to learn more about her family and her heritage because that was her grandmother's like dying wish and then you're actually following her grandmother in Cuba during the time of revolution so you're getting those two perspectives and there was like a romance that happened in the present period that kind of threw me for a loop. It happened very fast. It was very intense and high stakes like practically from the get-go and I didn't love it. So overall, this really just didn't work for me. I don't plan on continuing with the series, so this does not need to stay on my shelves. Next, I have Bloodbound by Patricia Briggs. This is the second in her Mercy Thompson series. I've only read this and the first book. The first book accidentally got ruined, and so that's why it's not in this unhaul because I just had to recycle it. But I enjoyed books one and two for the most part. But when I'm thinking honestly to myself, I don't know if I really want to invest my time and energy into this series. I don't know if I love it enough for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut my losses and stop now. I have so many other series that 
I'm in the middle of or plan to start series that I'm really excited about and really looking forward to. And this does not evoke those emotions in me and I don't really wanna waste time on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this along again to somebody who probably loves it more than I do. Next I have Roar by Cormac Carmack. This is another young adult fantasy. I picked this up because when Chelsea Palmer had her book club as part of a Facebook group, I was a member of that. And this was one of the selections. She has now switched from Facebook to Patreon, which I am also a member of that book club now. But I picked this up when it was like still early days in the book club. And I remember enjoying this at the time, but this is another situation where I remember absolutely nothing about it. I don't ever plan on rereading it. And it's not something I remember so fondly that I actually want to continue. So it's not like I actually want to go and read a summary about it so I can pick up the second book. There's just not enough motivation there for me. And so I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. Next, I have The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Alyssa R. Sloan. This is somewhat Daisy Jones-esque, yet not nearly as amazing. This is another situation where I remember enjoying my reading experience enough, but now that time has passed, I don't remember a whole lot about it. I definitely did have my issues with the story. It was nothing mind-blowing or crazy amazing or anything like that, and I really just don't feel the need to keep it on my shelves, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it along. Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is like a Renaissance Fair romance, and it was pretty cute. It's nothing that has stuck with me. It's nothing that I'm pulled to continue with because I know that there are at least two or three other books in this series, and additionally, if I remember correctly, no other books in the series have been released in this edition. They've all been released in paperback. And so if I wanted to continue in this series, none of the books would match. So I feel like if I do end up wanting to continue, like if I want to maybe revisit the story or just continue on in the series, I would probably want matching editions. I know that sounds weird and superficial, but I hate if I have a series that doesn't have matching books. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this along. And like I said, if I do feel the urge to continue, I can go ahead and just pick them up in paperback. Next, I have Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. So this is a mystery suspense thriller type of story. And I believe it features the like, like reluctant return to hometown trope, which I absolutely adore. This is not something that has stuck with me. I remember almost absolutely nothing about this book. In fact, the details of this book, like if I read the inside book flap, are getting confused with several other books with similar storylines and similar tropes. And I can't really distinguish this from those books. And so because of that, I'm going to go ahead and just pass it along. Because like I said, I don't really like to have a book on my shelves where I can't even at least remember the feelings behind it or specific things that I loved about it. I just don't remember anything at all about this. And so it needs to go. In a Book Club Far Away by Tiff Marcello. This is one that I didn't read. I started listening to it on audio. I got a chapter or two in. It just wasn't capturing my attention. And I know I, I gave up on it pretty quickly, but this book doesn't really have have a lot of positive reviews and I was reading some of them and I was just like yeah I can I can see what you're saying and I really just wasn't in in the mood for it and I could really feel that when I started the audiobook and so just thinking about it and thinking that I'm still not pulled towards it or drawn to read it I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. The Star-Crossed Sisters of Tuscany by Lori Nelson Spielman. This is another one that I just wasn't feeling. This is another one that I started and I was just like, mm, this isn't doing it for me. This isn't really the vibe that I was going for. It's not really what I was looking for in this story. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and pass it along. Next, I have This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins. This was actually a pretty sweet rom-com that I enjoyed while I was reading. This is just another situation where it wasn't really super memorable enough for me to wanna keep on my shelves. And so I'm gonna go ahead and let it go. The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garvis Graves. I did not love this one, y'all. I didn't really like it at all. I had a lot of issues with it. And I know a lot of the booktubers that I do follow really enjoyed this book, but it just wasn't for me. This follows two main characters, Annika and Jonathan. You're seeing them in 2001, and then you're seeing them 10 years ago when they first meet in college. So you're following them and their developing relationship in college. And then something happened that tore them apart, and now they are reconnecting in the present day timeline. And so you're following the development of both of their relationships, and it just really didn't do it for me. I didn't really enjoy this one. They did add September 11th in here, as a plot point for the 2001 timeline. And I don't know why they did that. It was entirely unnecessary. I don't really feel like it added much to the story overall, rather than to take a national tragedy and add it as this very dramatic part of the story that only lasted briefly. And then of course, resolved happily. Uh, I just, I don't know. I didn't really appreciate that at all. And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because I don't ever want to read it again. And I don't plan on continuing with this author. How to Hang a Witch by Adriana Mather. So Adriana Mather is actually a descendant of Cotton Mather, who was a notorious player in the Salem Witch Trials. So she wrote a story about Samantha, who is a descendant of Cotton Mather, and what happens when she and her stepmother end up moving to Salem to be like closer to her dad, who I guess, I, if I remember correctly, is injured or sick in a Boston hospital. And some of the witchy things that happens, there's also like a little love story here with a ghost that I actually really, really enjoyed. This was super atmospheric. It was super fun. It was like the perfect story to read during the Halloween spooky season. I actually liked this one a lot. This is another situation where I don't plan on continuing with this series, and I don't necessarily 
necessarily feel the need to hang on to it, even though I have such positive feelings towards it. So I'm going to go ahead and just pass this along and give it to somebody else who is probably also going to have a really fun time with it. I just don't really need to hang on to it. Then I have the movie tie-in edition of New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. I have gotten rid of all of my Twilight books, except for this one. Um, it didn't match any of the others in my collection. And so when I sold them, um, the person did not want this one. So I broke up with the Twilight series a very long time ago, even when it was still in the height of its popularity, even before all of the movies had been released. I just lost interest and just realized what a not great story this is. And even though there's definitely a lot of nostalgia attached to this, I really just didn't feel the need to continue to keep this on my shelves. It is absolutely not something I will revisit. It is not something I necessarily look on super fondly. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this along. Next, I have three books by Kimberly McCrae. And the reason why I'm getting rid of them is really all for the same reason. They were good in the moment. They were not terrible reading experiences, but they weren't necessarily memorable reading experiences for me. There's not really anything that I can specifically pinpoint out that I loved or disliked or liked or hated about any of these stories. And that is just a sign to me that I need to go ahead and pass them along. First, I have A Good Marriage, Where They Found Her, and Reconstructing Amelia. Like I said, these were all decent in the moment. And there's nothing really that I can pinpoint that I absolutely disliked about them. But there's nothing I can also pinpoint that I absolutely loved about them either. They were just all for the most part pretty mediocre reads. And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them. All right, y'all, we are down to the final three. First, I have Wild Blue Wonder by Carly Sorosiak. This is another situation similar to Starfish, where I believe one of the main reasons I am getting rid of this is because it does not have an audiobook. This is one that was highly recommended. I believe it was by Owl Crate a couple of years ago, and it sounded absolutely phenomenal, like that there was magical realism, harder hitting elements. It sounded atmospheric. It sounded very touching, and I was here for it. That's one of the reasons why I picked this book up. But this book, again, has been sitting on my shelves for a couple of years now. I have never picked it up. And when I was looking into it, I remember correctly, there was no audiobook to it. And this is another situation where I'm not going to sit down and take the time to read this physically. The only time I'm doing that is when I have the epic adult high fantasies that I really need to be able to read with my eyeballs and see and notate and refer back to context information and maps and things of that nature. I'm never going to do it with this. This is just not something I can invest time in physically. I have to have the audiobook for it. And, and I don't think that it exists. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this along for now, but totally willing to revisit in the future. Then I have City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is one of her middle grade novels. It follows our main character, Cassidy Blake, who can see ghosts ever since a near-death experience. She's been able to kind of pull back the veil between the living and the dead. And so it's her experiences with ghosts and um, ghost hunting parents who actually like don't necessarily believe in ghosts. So this was a fun time when I was reading it. Victoria or V.E. Schwab is very hit or miss for me. I don't love all of her stories. It really just depends on like the type of story that she's writing. So I'm not giving up on her as an author at all. But uh, again, I'm just not a middle grade reader. I'm not going to continue in this series. So this does not need to remain on my shelves. I will absolutely keep an eye on what she produces in the future to see if there is anything of interest to me. But for now, this one can go. And then the very last book in this unhaul is Geekerella by Ashley Poston. So this is another story that I absolutely loved when I read it. It was a super fun Cinderella retelling. I have such positive feelings about this one. This is just another one where I don't really plan on continuing in the series. I don't feel the need to keep it on my shelves. I feel like somebody else could get a lot of really great enjoyment out of it just like I did. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass it along. I don't need to keep it on my shelves. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are all of the books that I have unhauled over the past several weeks. And again, they are up on Pango if you're interested with the exception of Rule of Wolves and King of Scars, which I'm still trying to make my decision about. If there are any books in here that I have not read and you've read and you think I'm making a mistake in getting rid of them, please let me know. I will give you an opportunity to convince me to keep them. But for now, they are going to go. If you have made it this far in the video, please go ahead and leave me a book or book stack emoji or any emoji of your choice. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video.